Sometimes we want to initialize vectors using values from a scalar array. We first want to point out that the assigned symbol does not work for this case. Instead, we should use VloadN, a built-in function for initializing vectors using values from a scalar array. This function takes two arguments. First is offset, and the second one is the pointer to the scalar array. The scalar array can be in global memory, local memory, private memory, or even in constant memory. The first argument, offset, determines which elements of the array are placed in the vector. It is given in terms of the size of the vector, not the size of its scalar components. Next, we want to use these two examples to illustrate how we use VloadN built-in function and how we set the offset and the pointers. In the first example, we use VLOAD4 one comma array. VLOAD4 indicates that we have four elements in this vector that we want to initialize. This array points to the beginning of the scalar array. Let's say array starts from here. And because we use one, that is to say that we want to use the second vector of four. Note here, the first four elements in the scalar array are actually for the first four element vector. This index or offset four, that is to say that we want to use the second group of four elements. And this four, five, six, seven, these four elements in the scalar array will be used to initialize the content in the vector. And of course, each element in the scalar array should be the same as the element in the vector. In the second example, scalar array is array plus two. So in the second example, the pointer is array plus two. That is to say, we want to start from this location here to find out what are the initial values for this vector. Because again, we use offset one. So starting from here, the first four elements are for offset zero, and the next four elements will be used to initialize this vector, vec. Select function. Select function is similar to shuffle function. Select function and its bit version, bit select, can be used to select certain elements from two vectors and use those to build a new vector. Unlike the mask vectors in shuffle and shuffle2, the mask vectors in bit select and select can contain signed or unsigned integer values. For the select function, only the most significant bit in the mask elements matters. The most significant bits of one mask component is zero, then the corresponding element of the output vector will be set equal to the component in the first vector. If the most significant bit of the mask component is one, then we'll use the corresponding component in the second vector. Let's look at this example. So we have a mask which takes four elements, minus one, zero, minus one, and zero. And because it's minus one, so in binary, we have all Fs in this number. As a result, the most significant bit of this element is one. The most significant bit of the second element is a zero, and so on. So we're going to use this most significant bit to determine which one of these two elements, this is one element from the first vector, and this is the element from the second vector, this one will say that I will use the element in the second vector as my output vector, the corresponding element in the output vector. Then we'll look at the second element in the mask. In this case, the most significant bit of this vector is zero. 
So I will use the corresponding element in the first vector as the corresponding element in the final output vector. Likewise, we have a one here on the most significant bit of the third element. So we'll choose the third element from input vector two and use that element as the corresponding element in the output vector. And finally, this zero here indicates that we will use this last element in vector one as the corresponding element in the output vector. Bitwise select is very similar, although the difference here is every bit of the mask vector plays a part. If the mask bit equals to zero, then the corresponding bit of the first input is placed in the output. Otherwise, the corresponding bit of the second input is placed in the output. Let's look at this example. We have a mask that takes two elements, 0xAA, 0x55. So we have total 16 bit in this vector. And similarly, we have 16 bit in the first input vector and then 16 bit in the second input vector. In this example, uh, because the first bit in the mask is one, so we'll take the first bit from the second vector as the first bit in the output vector. And then the next bit is a zero, so we'll look at the second bit in the first vector and use that as the corresponding bit in the output vector. And, and we do all the bits uh, follow this rule. And eventually you will have the final output bit vector.